Police officers of Reddit. What are you thinking when you see cases like George Floyd? For all the police officers here what would the charges be if one of the bystanders pulled the police officer off of the poor guy? Wow thanks for gold. Assault on a police officer. Obstruction of justice and probably resisting arrest, depending on state laws of course, that gets tossed in as an easy one to charge, but usually gets played off in court. I fear that, if someone had intervened, that version of the story never would have received publicity. Death is a much more weighty headline. It's hard to intervene, when there's no visible precedent of it being effective, and there is a strong precedent of reactive brutality. I wish we had positive stories available on the news in which de-escalation worked. But in a similar way to flattening the curve, it's so much harder to count saved lives than lost ones. I'm a former police officer, and so have had plenty of training in physical restraint of individuals being arrested. There is no police academy training officers to kneel on someone's neck to subdue them. That's how you kill a person. There is extensive training on how to avoid seriously injuring a person while restraining them. And I guarantee you every one of these officers was trained to never strike a person in the neck or choke them. The officer who killed him is very clearly liable for manslaughter at the very least. And I think the other officers who stood by have some accountability as well. Because they knew damn well that was not how you handle a person. And should have stepped up. Absolutely sick to my stomach. I'm a lieutenant in my hometown police department. I started my day by showing the video to my officers and making sure my people understood that this is murder. Plain and simple. You never, outside of a life and death struggle, do anything like this. George Floyd was handcuffed and on the ground. If he was still struggling badly enough that they felt a need to hold him down, there's a hundred ways to do it safely. Use of force should always be as measured and considered as possible. There will always be times where an officer sees danger and has to make a split second decision without the luxury of weighing the consequences. That clearly was not the case here. He had all the time in the world to think about what he was doing. He had multiple people there telling him to stop and none of his fellow officers intervened. All of that is why I find this incident particularly disgusting. They had so many chances to do the right thing. Luckily, I have the fortune of working with good people who see this shit for what it is. Before the video was over, before I told them that George Floyd died because of this, my officers were muttering things like, what the fuck is he doing? You can't do that shit, and he needs to get off the man's fucking neck. Made me way prouder to be their leader than any number of arrests they could make to see that their instincts were not to defend the officer. For what it's worth, I'm glad that they were fired. I've heard mention in this thread that one of the officers has been arrested, which is great if true. I hope they are all brought to justice. Their actions, and lack thereof, were completely unconscionable. That's the part that gets to me. His fellow officers did nothing. I have a friend who was in the police force. He had been at the hospital visiting a fellow officer dying of cancer, then went on shift. He was trying to get some kids to leave an area they were in illegally and these children were being verbally aggressive and physically by snapping wet towels at him. In a moment a relapse of reason. He pulled his gun. I watched the video. As soon as his gun came out, three officers were there pushing his hand down and saying no. He put the gun away, turned around, went home and resigned. Bad day. Bad decision. He knew he had fucked up. You could see the instant he realized how screwed he was and realized how badly he screwed up. But, if his fellow officers hadn't stepped in, would his anger have been enough to shoot a teenager? We'll never know, because his fellow officers did the right thing. That's a powerful story. Thanks for sharing it. Not a local. I'm a fed. Five years into the job, George Floyd was murdered, and it's fucking disgusting. We are trained that anything involving the neck is a no-go and is considered deadly force. We were also trained that if you make an arrest in a prone position, you search and then immediately move them onto their side or a seated position because the risk of asphyxiation is so great. If a suspect says they can't breathe, believe them and take measures to correct to it. This training is reinforced at least twice a year in our use of force training. These officers deserve to spend the rest of their lives in prison. It's reassuring to hear this. 
Any suggestions on how employment screening could be improved to avoid letting people like this join the ranks and tarnish the reputation of all the good cops? I'm not a cop. But I think we need a new organization specifically for investigating police corruption and crime. This organization should have an anonymous phone number good policemen can call to report crime, corruption, racists, etc. within a local or state police force and have them investigated. You may be interested to know in the UK we have the IPCC, Independent Police Complaints Commission, who are notified whenever someone is shot by an armed officer as standard, so it is always independently investigated. Even in the blatantly obvious cases where the shooting needed to happen. Works pretty well. Retired after 28 years. Nothing less than murder. All the guys I worked with would never have considered doing something like that. You treat combative in custodies once they are secured as human beings. Nothing should be personal. Once they've been subdued and you are safe as an officer, you stand him up. Pat him down and understand that your RST is at a low point in his life. Give him some dignity and you'll generally get his respect. It works 90 plus percent of the time. That man was subdued and nobody should have been on him at that point. I'm a police officer in California. I'm absolutely disgusted by the officer's actions. When someone is in our custody you must treat them properly. I don't care if they are arrested for murder or forgery. They are a human with a story and they deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. I had tears streaming down my face watching the video of George Floyd. We swore to protect our communities and that's what we set out to do every day. Putting a knee into the neck of a handcuffed man for an extended period of time isn't protecting. A man has lost his life due to the gross negligence of an evil person. May he rest in peace. Makes it harder to protect communities when you lose the trust of the public. These situations hurt you all unfortunately. This is very true. I work for a department that has a very poor history with minorities. That's something I will never deny and it affects the way I approach my work every single day. Cop here. Disgusted. There are a 1000 reasons why this shouldn't have happened. Simple. Easy. Steps that should have been taken. Lessons that policing has learned over the past 200 years and basic things taught in every academy. Make no mistake. This was murder. Maybe not premeditated murder. But nonetheless murder. I will be angry if those officers do not get indicted. He's apparently been involved in at least two other deaths including shooting a fleeing suspect in the back. I don't know given that history premeditation seems reasonable. That is inexcusable. Unfortunately. Does this mean that he won't be charged? It's happened two times before. After all, unfortunately bad press is a motivating factor in getting the DA to do their job instead of just the straight facts. My question would be, is there a separate body that looks at these police shootings that is outside of the police depth and the DA's office that works closely with the police, or do we have to keep doing this and having these murders and the only time the killers get in trouble is if there's enough publicity to get the justice the victims deserve? Exactly. If this wasn't publicized to the point that it has been, it would have been rug sweeped and forgotten about. Imagine how many more cases there are out there that that happened to. Didn't the same happen in New York a few years ago with Eric Garner being put in a chokehold? Yup. Sure did. All the cops got off. Was cop for nearly 10 years before being taken out with an injury. Stayed in support role for 2 years before leaving. Everything was wrong. I can't tell you how much in the academy. Textbook and indie tea. You're told and it's stressed. Never choke. No choker holds. Do not put pressure on the neck or spine from any direction. Unless it's life or death. And you better be able to prove it. Secondary. Never leave someone in the prone position. The worst part is. He stared at him as he was fading. He could hear it and he watched as he stopped and passed out. Then it gets uglier. He continues to hold the pressure. If he got up, there's a chance he'd have survived. Straight up homicide. I was a cop in the military. In the police academy this was one of the things that taught us not to do as it could crush the windpipe. The only time I was ever taught to use chokes and neck halts was in combat training for deployments. But when we got back we always had to attend retraining classes to relearn what we can do stateside. 
It's amazing that time and time again you see military saying this is exactly not what to do, but for some reason the civilian trainers seem to forget to teach the same. Would I rather be a POW to an American soldier vs American cop I'll take soldier every time. You know what's sad as I've been told police agencies don't wanna hire MPs because they are harder to retrain. Yet time and time again we prove them wrong by being better trained in humanitarianism. Well clearly they are right. MPs are harder to retrain. In their way. I wish I could give you gold. Gotcha covered Bratato chip. Sheriff's deputy here, and I must say that I'm disgusted by the unnecessary loss of life. There are moments that make me regret what I do, and this is one of them. I've met my share of racists wearing a badge, and I'm ready for a career change. The oath we take is to uphold the law and constitution. So for the officers on scene there that could have stepped in and prevented this. Fuck you. One bad apple always ruins the bunch. Unfortunately. I pray for the George's family and that justice is served. Throw away for obvious reasons and yes I'm a white male. Edit. Wasn't expecting this to blow up as it has. I'm responding to you guys when I can. And I'm glad we can have a conversation about this. We do not unionize in my state for law enforcement. And I see many comments about systemic protection and abuse. I have never worked under a police union. But I have worked with people who were unionized, and I have heard my share of stories where lead is protected by the union. Stories I hear are about union protection from bad leadership, but I can imagine those protectionists may extend further in cases such as this. See. People say things like not all cops are bad but, based on what I've read in this sub a lot of good cops quit because they get tired of the corruption and racism. The law enforcement system seems to filter out the good guys and the jerks are overrepresented. Yes. Systems that reward our sole behavior. E. G. By a lack of accountability. By increased profits etc. Produce a significantly higher share of assholes. It's like that in the police. It's like that in politics and it's like that in business. Even the Karen calling the manager meme stems from that. Here the asshole system is the flawed notion of the customer is always right. As a son of a former police officer, my dad worked really hard to be an honest cop. His department was full of racists. They didn't like him because he was a decent cop. They couldn't do anything wrong on front of him. We saw the news together and I saw him wipe a tear but tried really hard to hide it. I know he's sad and I don't want to push him to talk about it. But we both know things like this is always gonna happen. And that is a really sad fact I can't possibly understand why a human being would do something like this. My grandfather was NYPD beat cop. Passed over for promotions and refused to have a partner when he could. Said it was because he found out that most other cops couldn't be trusted. He was on the force for nearly 35 years. From the time he got out of WWII to the early 90s. I've got a lot of family history with the NYPD and the FDNY. I had four cousins in the NYPD. All of them quit after saying cops are just too untrustworthy to be around. Three of them joined up the FDNY instead. Now I got nine cousins and four uncles on the FDNY. Or formerly, I had a great uncle who had been a police officer. Told me once that in 20 years he only had to pull his pistol out of its holster one time on duty. And that was enough to take care of things. These days a lot of officers seem to think that whipping the guns out is step one for backslash backslash or backslash backslash situations. I work for a U.S. Federal Bureau but I'm not a local police officer. All four cops need to go to jail. Derek Chauvin. The cop with the neon George's neck. Should've gone to jail long ago. The guy apparently has a history of doing this. This is his third time in 15 years. Black people need to keep fighting, and white slash Asian slash Latino people need to support them. Justice for cases like this won't come easy, and it won't come soon. But if they keep fighting, I truly believe that one day, eventually, it will come. My former local precinct. They did nothing except eat pizza and hang out at the gas station across from where this happened. Their whole precinct needs to be investigated. They were never bothered with doing their job. I used to be a police officer. It was fucking embarrassing going out the day after something like this happened. One of the reason I quit was because I had no pride in my job anymore for the people doubting 
if I used to be a cop or not. This is the only proof I really have. In order to get the police officer flare on slash r slash protect and serve you need to send the mods a pic of your police issued ID. Haven't been to that sub since before I quit, but here it is https slash slash inga com slash a slash duck to knob. It was fucking embarrassing going out the day after something like this happened. I find it odd the police union itself never seems to feel this same sense of embarrassment about severe misconduct. I find it odd the police union itself never seems to feel this same sense of embarrassment about severe misconduct in another thread today, on the subject of Jeffrey Reed Elmer, who killed, raped, and cannibalized his victims. Dalma was experimenting on live victims, drilling holes into their brains, and pouring bleach, and boiling water in trying to create sex slaves with no other brain function. At one point, one of his victims, a 14-year-old boy, escaped from Dalma's house. He was naked. His head had a hole drilled in it. He was bleeding from. His anus was bleeding from being raped. He wasn't able to communicate. Brain damage from Drano. Ladies in the community called the police. The police showed up. Dalma caught up with them and told them the boy was 19. And he was unresponsive because he go drunk after an argument. He showed them pictures he'd taken of him raping the boy to prove they had a relationship. Cops left the victim in the care of Delma, who raped again, killed and cannibalized him a few hours later. I'll quote from the officer's wiki page. The officers noticed a strange smell in Dama's apartment, which was the decaying corpse of a previous victim in the bedroom, but made no attempt. To investigate the officers did not check Dama's identification, had they done so, they would have discovered that Dama was a sex offender previously convicted for molesting the 14 year old's older brother their actions were widely publicized, including an audio tape of the officers making homophobic statements to their dispatcher and cracking jokes about having reunited the lovers they were terminated. Both officers later appealed their termination. Judge Robert J. Parins decided the case and ruled in favor of the officers, allowing them to be reinstated in May 2005. Bull Serzak was elected president of the Milwaukee Police Association Union head. Great reward. A position you get elected to from your fellow union members. This was well publicized. Everyone knew about it. Certainly on the force, if not the general public too. Cops picked that scumbag to represent them. Line em up and shoot em all far as I'm concerned. You have to stand up for the good cops and let them be what they can be. By being critical of the bad cops and holding them accountable. Retired. It disgusts me as the job is difficult enough as it is. Working mostly in sensitive neighborhoods. Brutality like this makes it far more difficult. How difficult was it for you to build community trust? Did you have to continuously fight against atrocities such as the recent cases? Or was your community more sheltered from those issues?